If you are a DocuSign user who wants to know what a power form is and why you should use one, then this video is for you. We'll cover what it is, what it's not, and how to set one up. And we'll also talk about the things that you need to consider if you decide to use a power form. At the end of the video, I'll also share with you how to work around the biggest limitation of power forms, which are workflow variations. And it's something you'll not find anywhere else and that DocuSign doesn't even mention anywhere. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi, and I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped thousands of companies like yours automate document-related tasks in their sales, onboarding, and recruitment workflows. To automate your documents, you're going to need templates, databases, and integration. And that's exactly what we build for our clients. So if you're tired of fighting the documents and manual tasks alone, you can find a link in the description of this video to book a strategy session with one of our document automation experts. But if you prefer to do things on your own for now, I strongly suggest that you download our free document automation cheat sheet because it will help you understand how to automate all your documents and forms. Now, let's go back to our power form explanation. Let's start with what a power form is. A power form is an envelope that your signers can access to complete your documents without you having to log into DocuSign to send them the document in the first place. In other words, it's a self-service document. Think about this. Normally, if you want to send an envelope to a recipient, assuming that you're not using an integration, you will need to log into DocuSign and enter the name and email of your recipients at some point before you press send, right? But what happens in situations where you don't know who the signers are? Let me give you an example. This document is an investor agreement. We need this document to be completed as part of our onboarding process. Now, sometimes the document needs to be signed by additional people on the investor side, like a spouse or a custodian. And so while we know that our investors will need to sign this agreement at some point we don't know whether we'll need their spouse or custodian signatures because those signatures aren't required in all cases without a power form then the investment management company who needs to get that document signed will need to collect the spouse or custodian name and emails from the investor then they will need to log inside of DocuSign choose the template so that the envelope gets created finally add the name and email of the spouse and or the custodian in inside of the document and then press send. But that's not really ideal. But with PowerForm, we can make the document available for self-service on a URL. The benefit is that the investors can complete the form and provide the name and emails of their spouse or custodians without having to talk to the person who needs to receive that document signed and even wait for the person to send them the document. This provides a much better experience for the investor and saves time for the sender of the document as well. I've used the example of this investor agreement, but you could do exactly the same thing with any other form. Other common use cases are loan applications so that loan seekers can get funded quickly or employee leave request forms so that employees can submit leave requests without having to reach out to HR. Now, I hope that this makes sense. If we summarize, how forms are simply DocuSign templates that your signers can access directly without you having to log into DocuSign to send them the document. And there's no need for you to know who the signers are. But so how do your signers access the power form, you may ask? You can make the forms available on a web page or you can also simply send the power form URL link by email to those signers. It really depends. Once your signers access the power form, this is what they see. This is called the power form landing page. They see the instruction message that you can customize, which they will hopefully read and they can add the name and email of all the signers as well as their name and email. The only thing you need to do is to fill out the name and email for the required recipients here and click on begin signing. Now this is how you can deliver self-service signing experiences to your signers which they will absolutely love and will save your team a ton of time. Now let's see how you can set up a power form. Step one, you're going to set up your form as a DocuSign template. And by the way, if you haven't watched my tutorials on how to create a DocuSign template, now go ahead and do that first because otherwise nothing is going to make sense. If you are a beginner, I would also strongly recommend that you download my DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. You'll find the link down below. It'll help you get set up and started with DocuSign. Step two, you're gonna to wanna to check that your template's recipients have recipient role names and that your first recipient doesn't have an email or a name. Remember, you can't have a static 
name and email for the first recipient because that person's name and email will always change. Step number three, you'll want to check that your signers are either locked for editing or removal. For example, if we don't want our signers to forget to provide the name and email of their spouse, we'll want to tick the box, don't allow senders to delete the recipient. What this will do is it will edit, it will update the PowerForm landing page and make that recipient required here. Step four, once you've saved your template, you wanna wanna click on more and create a PowerForm. This is where you will get the URL after you click on that create button here. You can copy this URL and embed it inside of your email template. Uh, this is the URL that your signers will be able to click on and then and they will land on that PowerForm landing page. Here. So that's option one, you can use the URL link and put it in an email. Option two, you can use the embed code. And so you can copy this code and place it inside of your web page. Um, this is going to create an iframe, which is basically a window that will appear within your web page so that the PowerForm is displayed on your web page URL. Now, it's important to highlight that there is a big limitation if you use PowerForms. PowerForms don't work very well with workflow variations. Let's go back to the investor group agreement example. If I send the PowerForm link to my investor, there is no guarantee that the investor will not forget to enter the name and email of their spouse if they have one. They might not even know that they need to provide the name and email of their spouse at this point. Maybe they don't want to make a joint investment. Maybe they want to do it on their own. But some states require the investor to invest jointly if they're married, even if they don't necessarily want to. And because some of my investors will have a spouse and some investors won't, I can't make the recipient field required. And it's the same problem with the name and email of the custodian. We don't know whether a custodian will need to sign the agreement. So we're going to need to rely on the investor to know that um, without prompting them that and we're, we're going to have to trust that they follow the instructions um, that we have here on the top of our PowerForm landing page and and hope they do provide us the name and email of the custodian and or of the spouse. But you see that creates in my mind a big issue because that leaves a room for error. And so when you automate a workflow, you want to remove as many error breaking points. It's very easy for investors not to provide an email of those recipients and click on begin signing. That's why I suggest that if you have different workflow variations, it's better to build an interview style form that collects all the required information for that given workflow. Let me explain. The interview style questionnaire that I like to use is JotForm. And you can get a free JotForm plan by signing up through the link in the description of this video. Now let me show you how this works. So in our JotForm, we've built a questionnaire that helps us determine who the signers of this document should be. So here, for example, if it's a natural person, we will ask the following question, do you have a spouse? Yes or no? And Maybe they do not want to sign up as a, invest as a natural person. Maybe they want to use their trust. So if they select the trust, then we will want to know the name of the trust. And maybe we will want to know how many trustees uh, will need to sign the JOT form. So once the number of signers and, and type of signers are identified, then JOT form will require the uh, investor to provide the name and email for those uh, required signers. And once that's done, the DocuSign process will start right away. You'll note here that we're skipping the PowerForm landing page because we have already collected the name and email of our recipients. This is how you create an amazing signing experience and error-free uh, signing process for your signers. And this is by taking advantage of the many benefits that JotForm brings. It's a really super versatile software that I recommend over DocuSign in some cases like this one. Now, in the next video, I will show you how you can build a JotForm and integrate it with DocuSign. And if you'd like our help to help you automate your sales, onboarding or recruitment process, then schedule a strategy session with one of our consultants using the link in the description of this video. Our services include template databases and integration development to help you automate your workflow. I will see you in the next one. See ya. Bye.